Hi, welcome to the Quilted Lizard Fiber Art Studio. I'm Karen Eckmeyer, and today we are going to add photographs to an accidental landscape, and specifically people. There's a little trick when you add people to your landscapes. So before we get started, before I share that secret with you, let's talk about the basics of photo transfer. There are many different brands of fabric, sew-in fabric sheets, but there are three key words that you want to look for. You want to see the word inkjet printer on the package. You want to see the word peel. And you want to, most important, see the word sew. All right, so print, peel, sew. That one worked for this one. And here we see it print, ah, we see dry 60 seconds. I would say nine out of 10 of the fabric sheets will recommend that you soak it in cold water for uh, a minute, that's fine, and peel, and ready to sew. Those are the key words. Sometimes you have to be a detective to find the words. Here we have inkjet, that's good. Peel, paper backing, that's good. But to find the word sew, I had to look a little harder, and here it is on the back, easy to attach by sewing. So these will work. And just one more, uh, I've used these four. There are many, like I said, on the market, uh, but look for these words. This one, design on computer, because that's what you will be doing. Print and sew. So what do they look like? It's just a, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. The paper's here, and it's 100% cotton on the front side. So that's what we need to get started. The first step, of course, is to start with the photograph that you love. This is a photograph that we have of our daughter. Uh, well, she's 40 now, so this was taken a long time ago, but I just love this picture and I really wanted to, to save it in a fabric form. So, I had it on the computer. I know that I want to make about an 8x10 seam. I don't know exactly what size I want little Julie to be. So, I take her on the computer and I crop about so much around her so that I have images like this. So I have a big Julie, a little Julie, medium Julie, <laughs> and little Julie. And then in order to see if they fit on there, it would be rather awkward to try to uh, go here and see did I really match my colors right. So to make it easier for myself, I have cut the medium and the small and the large Julie's with about a quarter inch around her. That way I can match up the colors behind her so that I can blend her in. Now you might be wondering why I didn't just cut her out like so. Well, long time ago I did my first photo transfer and I did it that way. And you can imagine, if this was already, um, these are still just paper form. If I stitch right on her leg and then try to stitch on her hands, what's it going to do? It's going to totally distort her. So in order to prevent that, that's why we cut that quarter inch around. Now that I know that this is the size I want, then I can go ahead and transfer that to fabric because those fabric sheets were expensive, are expensive rather. And so now that I know the right size, I'll transfer it to fabric, or I'm sorry, the fabric um, to one of the sheets. And then we're going to peel the paper away. Now some of the papers peel away really easily. This Taylor uh, brand peels away very easily. Some of them you're going to actually iron it on the back side first to get it so that the paper will release. And it's just a matter of playing with the corner. So here's here's one version here and then I have another one. This is the, the Simplicity. It's a, a cotton poplin so it's a little softer. So I have my Julie transferred to fabric. Next step is I'm going to cut that quarter inch, a little bit generous quarter inch around. So like this, just so I don't have to stitch on her little body or mess up her face. And then I'm going to put it back onto 
my layers. This is what this is how an accidental landscape is created. Uh, if you're interested in creating an accidental landscape, I have videos which I will provide links for. But it consists of all these layers that have been freeform cut. Uh, edges are ironed under. And so I have layered them and I'm trying to... Oh, I just got lucky here. See how that, that matches just so nicely. Like so. I've really matched the colors as best as I can. So at that point, Let's just pretend that we fast forwarded and we top stitched this. So here it is top stitched and squared up. And I'm I, I could put her here, but I think I'm gonna I would prefer to put her about in this spot because I'm gonna put sailboats here later. And also think about the photographer's rule of thirds, which we quilters have adopted. Uh, picture a tic-tac-toe grid on your piece and you want to put your focal point in one of those places so this third intersecting mark would be a nice place to put her <coughs> excuse me I'm going to adhere her with just a little fabric glue it could be Elmer's it can be this Roxanne's glue based it test your glue first make sure that it's not going to shadow through um, so we'll pin her in place then we're going to add our borders and get it ready for quilting and I'm going to show you what she looks like once she's been quilted into the seam okay so I've been busy I added the borders and I've quilted and now that you can see Julie is perfectly integrated into the seam with the quilting stitches. So the quilting, you want to match your thread to the background area. The stitching comes right up to her arm, her hair, and around. Because if, if I went into her hair, well, besides you'd see the thread, it would distort her head, and we don't want that. And then a little bit here and here. And hopefully, I think that looks pretty good where she's integrated into the scene. So let me show you some other examples of adding a photograph. Here's a picture of the, the group of us uh, many years ago. Um, this, the background of this is a little more complicated. Uh, I didn't say it earlier, but adding a photograph to a beach scene or ocean or lake is very easy because the layers are simple. So with this, I've cut out the photograph. I still have it on paper. And I will make my layers for my accidental landscape to correspond with that. And here we have a little bit of magic, so something like that turns into this. So we've got the whole gang. And again, the quilting just ties it in, holds, holds my family down without puckering their legs or their face. Some of you may be golfers um, and you might want to commemorate a special course that you love to go to. Or you might be the golfer or might have a friend that's a golfer. Um, I didn't have a picture of a golfer to, for the demo, but I just took a generic uh, silhouette here. Um, so same idea. You're going to make your accidental landscape strips to correspond. So it would be strips of green. That's nice and easy and you would follow the same steps that I showed you with little Julie to adhere it to a landscape or to your golf course. So that's people. What about your four-legged family members? Um, or you have a picture that it doesn't have a background that you necessarily can match. This is my daughter's uh, dog Boone and I wanted to put him on a beach scene but this was not a beach background, so I really did have to cut around him exactly on the edge. I wasn't able to leave a quarter inch around, but you know what? He didn't bite me, he didn't bark at me, and it was totally fine. Um, and I have a picture at the end of the, of the video to show you uh, what he looks like stitched on a little postcard I made. Um, but that it seems to be okay with animals that, that you can stitch on the edge of their fur and, and it's, it doesn't distort them as much. I don't know why. Um, another way without not people or animals, you might have a photograph from a trip that you would like to integrate into your landscape. This was a trip to Italy and here's the photograph or the photo transfer. 
It's part of a villa with flowers and then there's a hilltop village here. And so I integrated it the scene but I did not need to leave a quarter inch around because the building didn't mind <laughs> if I stitched on the edges and the flowers didn't mind it either. So that's a way to integrate some of your favorite photos from vacations into a scene. Uh, again, you don't have to add that quarter inch. So if this sounds interesting to you and you'd like to learn out more about it, I have uh, how to make an accidental landscape, if that's new to you, in my Accidental Landscapes book. And there's more examples of adding photographs to your scenes. And if by chance you're interested in the golf courses, I do have a pattern and it shows how to make a golf course with a, oh, palm trees or cactus or, or different settings that you might want to add your photograph to. Photographs are not included that you supply yourself, but I give you the ideas and hopefully you have fun with that. Thank you for joining me today. I hope I've given you a couple of good ideas of how to add photos to your vacation pictures to make them a real keepsake memory.